My presentation today is about trace metal analysis in active pharmaceutical ingredients by inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer. Inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer, uh, the name is abbreviated as of this instrument as ICPMS. In my presentation, I will refer to this instrument very often as ICPMS. ICPMS is a unique system that allows the removal of spectral interferences and ultra trace measurements over the widest elemental range in most complex and challenging pharmaceutical sample types. Um, ICPMS measures positively charged ions. In this slide, I will quickly review some basic concepts of an atom, as atom is measured by ICPMS. So an atom is a particle of matter that uniquely identifies a chemical element. It consists of central nucleus and is surrounded by at least one or more electrons. Nucleus is positively charged, contains one or more particles known as protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged. Neutrons have no charge and um, electrons are negatively charged. An atom which have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons are known as different isotopes of the same element. Isotopes are specified by the sum of protons and neutrons. In the illustration below, I'm showing lithium atom. It consists, it has two um, isotopes, lithium-6 and lithium-7. Lithium-6 consists of two, three protons and three neutrons. Lithium-7 consists of three protons and four neutrons. Choices of a different isotope helps overcome the interferences in ICPMS. I'll give you an example. A uh, vanadium, very toxic uh, element that we analyze by I test by ICPMS very often. Um, it has two isotopes, isotope of MS-51 and isotope of MS-50. Um, the isotope uh, at the MS-51 is very abundant, but it also has a lot of interference, um, a lot of background that comes from uh, hydrochloric acid, which is uh, very often used for sample, um, di dissolving the sample in ICPMS. So we very often have this high background, but because we have another choice of vanadium at the mass 50, we may analyze this atom at, at that particular mass to avoid the interferences. And there are many different ways that I go about my interferences to eliminate them and measure the atoms of interest. ICPMS technique generates elemental ions, filter the ions, identifies and quantify them. Ions are measured as a mass to charge ratio. Ionization is a complete loss of an electron from an atom or a molecule. The resulting species is called ion. Ionization process that take place inside the ICPMS instrument, and I will go into a greater detail about it. So ICPMS consists of six major hardware components. Uh, component number one is sample introduction system. 
It consists of peristolic pump, nebulizer, spray chamber, and a torch. Peristolic pump delivers liquid sample into the instrument. A liquid sample passed through the nebulizer. Nebulizer is also connected with argon gas. When the sample mix with argon gas, the mist aeros or aerosol is formed. This aerosol uh, is not very uniform at that point yet, but it travels into the spray chamber. Spray chamber operates at the lower low temperature around two degrees C. And the big droplets from this aerosol will stick to the walls of the spray chamber and uh, eventually will go to waste. And the sample will, will move on to the torch. Um, the torch of icing PMS is um, connected to the coil. Coil provides very high voltage electricity. Um, the electricity, when the argon gas pass through this uh, torch, will create a spark. And argon gas will um, create a flame. The flame is called plasma in ICPMS. Um, the energy that is achieved by the flame in ICPMS is sufficient to exceed first ionization potential. So plus one in almost every element atom in the periodic table. That, that is very unique uh, about the ICPMS. So what is happening in the torch? When the sample gets to the torch, is decomposed, burned, dry, atomized, and ionized. So this is exactly where that ionization process take place in ICPMS and produce positively charged ions. Next, the sample will travel into the interference code. Cones. There are uh, basically two different cones, sample cone and the skimmer cone. Sample cone um, creates the ion transition into the high vacuum. Ion beam dramatically will also expand behind the sampler cone and move on to the skimmer cone. Um, negative voltage is applied in the skimmer cone, so positively charged ions can pass through this part of the instrument with an ease. And also skimmer cone will um, make the ion beam to be more uniform uh, in terms of ion distributions. Then sample moves on to the lenses. Uh, lenses influence the transition of ions, maximize the signal of an ion by focusing the positive ions and separating them from the neutral or negative species. Next, the sample pass onto the collision reaction cell. Um, collision reaction cell is another filter. Um, of these um, ions, the clouds of ions, that still contain some impurity, like polyatomic impurity. And a collision uh, reaction cell can act in different mode, modes. One of the mode, common mode that is used by collision reaction cell is KED, kinetic energy discrimination mode. We supply um, a helium gas into the collision reaction cell, and the helium gas will collide with polyatomic impurity and lower the kinetic energy of these polyatoms and separate further separate them from positively 
charge ions that we need to eventually measure and uh, determine the very accurate concentration. Um, collision cell can also be hooked up into the reaction gases. Those gases are oxygen, uh, hydrogen gas, uh, nitric gas, and, and some other gases. Uh, this is a more complex way of going to eliminate the impurity in uh, ICPMS sample. Uh, we have to know more about the sample, how this reaction gas will react with those impurities. Uh, so we may have to like know the, the impurities that might be present and eliminate them. Um, next is the um, positive ions will move onto the quadruple ion deflector part of ICPMS that is illustrated in the picture on this slide. Ion deflector lens will deflect the ions, positively charged ions of interest by 90 degree angle and move them onto the quad, actual quadruple. The other species will be filtered again, uh, but uh, not complete, completely yet, and um, the ion of interest will go to the place where they need to be measured. So quadruple um, operates via electromagnetic field. It is a mass filter. It consists of four metallic rods that are gold plated plated and uh, the electromagnetic field in quadruple um, it's a combination of radio frequency current and direct current and the ions that are present there they will be um, moving um, because of the radio frequency current and they will be also separating from each other because of the direct uh, current. At the given ratio or of a radio frequency and direct current, only ions with a very specific mass to charge ratio will pass through the entire quadruple and will be measured, will create a signal in quadruple that will be measured that signal and next um i'm sorry and the, uh, and next the uh, positively charged ions will move on to the detector detector also known as the electron multiplier um, in icpms the detector will uh, process by the detection electronics that signal and send into the computer for data processing. This is a summary um, slide. I summarize um, all the things uh, that I just talked about it. So in summary, for ICPMS, liquid sample will be introduced into the ICPMS instrument. Um, in the torch, ion formation will take place and the ex ion will be extracted uh, from other species uh, starting in the torch. Ion beam formation and purification will occur through the electronic lenses of ICPMS. Um, then ion separation will take place in quadruple and ion detection in electron multiplier. I had to show you periodic table. So as we know, most elements in periodic table will be uh, measured by ICPMS. Um, the only elements that cannot be measured are those that have a very low atomic mass. Um, the mass is so low that is beyond the capability of ICPMS to measure those masses. And also, um, noble gases cannot 
be measured by ICPMS, um, ionization potential of novel gases is so high that we cannot break off the electrons by the energy that is generated in, um, in the torch of ICPMS. So uh, those elements that I'm showing in periodic table can be very toxic to the human body. Um, there are many of those element, elements that are toxic and are not desirable in pharmaceutical substance and its products. These elements are classified based on their toxicity. The most toxic elements are class one metals, and those are mercury, lead, arsenic, and cadmium. Uh, class 2A is the next group, and that is cobalt in this group, vanadium, and nickel. Toxicity limits are established by government regulatory institutions. Um, those institutions are FDA, USP, um, EP, European Pharmacopoeia, Japanese Pharmacopoeia, and also uh, International Conference on Harmonization. This particular institution established the limits for pharmaceutical substances and its products. It also harmonized all those proposed limits from the other institutions that I just um, mentioned. Uh, ICH contains three different parts within the guidelines. Um, one of the parts is evaluation of toxic data. So ICH will send for toxicology study to toxicology labs. Um, let's say they will say, please evaluate uh, um, lead in, in they using different animal, different species. They treat uh, these animals with those toxic elements. They record all the data and describe in great details what happens to the animals and send uh, the data for evalu evaluation to ICH. ICH has different equations um, convert this data um, into, into limits that will apply into human body. Um, so uh, basically ICH establish permitted daily exposure for each element of the toxicological toxicological concern. It also um, summarized in its guidelines application of the risk. In this slide, I have a summary table that I directly copy from ICH Q3D guideline. Uh, as you can see, there are a total of 24 different elements that um, we are interested in, and we know that those elements can have toxicological effect on the human body. As I mentioned before, we classify those elements into different groups. Um, class one is the most toxic, are the most toxic. In class one, uh, we contain most toxic elements, and class three are the least toxic elements. We um, ICH also presents in this table different route of administration of uh, drug substance or drug products that may contain those toxic elements. Oral PDE, permissible daily exposure expressed in micrograms per day, uh, is probably um, the highest limit, it contains the, not probably, it's obvious from the table, it contains the highest limits um, from uh, 
different elements, then parenteral, those are the injectable, they are of a lower limit because, um, you know, injectable go to the human body. It can be like a hundred ml of saline or one liter of saline. Sometimes I think maximum is two liter of saline that will go to the human body with the given drug substance. To, so the concentration to begin with has to be lower. And then another route of administration is inhalations. So spray, and that's also in microgram uh, per day. So I work all the time with those limits. I calculate the concentration uh, of my uh, of my elements when I do my study based on this table. I also want to brag how wonderful ICPMS is. At the same time, in one minute, we can determine the concentration. Um, that is very high, for example, one part in a hundred or parts per trillion. Let's say we measure the sodium. So sodium concentration will be one in thousands ppm, where if we work also at the same time, and we usually do with mercury or arsenic, um, and those uh, concentration are much lower, they will be parts per trillion. In summary, I would like to say that for the last 30 years, ICPMS has been gaining favor with laboratories around the world as the instrument of choice for performing trace metal analysis. Instrument detection limits are below parts per Trillion, and it only gets better as they build uh, new ICPMS instruments. It delivers excellent sensitivity, of course, accuracy, and it's very fast. Isotopic analysis can be now very readily ever, uh, achievable because of ICPMS. It is, ICPMS is very easy to use and increases productivity. This is all that I have for today. Thank you for your attention.